The cradle of humankind has become something of a treasure trove in the world of paleoanthropology. That's the study of the early development of anatomically modern human to lay people like you and me. It's the site of historical discoveries that have sparked excitement and debate in the scientific community. Most recently, its rising star cave revealed remnants of an extinct species named Homo naledi. And since then, the cave system has become a hive of activity as more clues are uncovered about how Homo naledi lived. And none of that work would be possible without a special group of people called the underground astronauts. Masa went to meet them. Every single day is a new adventure. You're going to drop about 30 meters in this journey, over about 100 meters. Not too Not tight. Trick, but it's okay. This is not particularly extreme caving, but there are parts of it that are tight. It's an early, very chilly morning here at the Cradle of Humankind, and I'm with a group of very special people. They're called underground astronauts, and they're about to go into this rising star cave system to try and unlock secrets of our past. Oh, wow. The discovery of four human ancestors or hominids right here in Gauteng's cradle has played an important role in unraveling the history of human evolution. It's a slow process, um, and it's, it's exciting because you never know what might pop up. Vitz paleoanthropologist Dr. Ginelwe Molopiani studies human evolution through fossils. She was awarded the prestigious National Geographic title of Emerging Explorer in 2021 and now heads up the team of underground astronauts. I always wanted to be an archaeologist from the age of seven. Really? And I was just fascinated because there was this, this idea that you could tell a story about a time long gone and from voices that can no longer speak. National Geographic explorer in residence and Vitz paleoanthropologist Professor Lee Berger is credited with finding two hominids in his career, Australopithecus sediba in 2008 and in 2015, Homo naledi was revealed to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, a new species of human ancestor, Homo naledi. Homo naledi was discovered in the Rising Star cave system, only two kilometers from the famous Sterkfontein Caves. Although cavers have regularly explored its rocky corridors, Naledi's remains lay undisturbed because they lay in an inaccessible cave below a dangerous 12-meter vertical chute with some gaps only as wide as a pencil. Prof Berger realized he needed help getting into the cave, so he advertised for scientists with at least a master's degree, a lean frame, caving experience, and the ability to work in extremely claustrophobic spaces. He watched from his command center above ground while a band of women explored the extraordinary history of humankind. Days and days we sat watching these images that would flicker between color and then go to infrared and black and white. And it felt like those early images you see from the space program, you know, those Apollo images. And in the middle of all that, uh, in one of these interviews, I blurted out, you know, they're, they're incredible, they're heroic. They're like astronauts, but underground astronauts. And it stuck. Let's turn this bad boy on. Yeah. Are we ready to go? We're ready. All right. And hug the wall if you need to hug the wall. I have been given the wonderful privilege of accompanying the team. <laughs> Part of the laughter is nervousness. The trip to the burial site is treacherous. It is about 90 meters underground, and there are steep drops and some claustrophobically narrow spaces, and a section where you can only fit through if your one arm is held straight in front of you, like Superman. And there it is. I've made it out what they've called Superman's crawl. And you know what they say, if you make it out Superman's crawl, you're a bit of a superhero. <laughs> And I've arrived at Dragon's Back, where Dr. Molopiane and team are excavating. 
Doc, talk about an exciting job. This is no <laughs> ordinary nine to five. No. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a grown adult who's never outgrown her sandbox days, right? <laughs> I love playing um, in the sand. Well, what I do is called excavation. Puzzling out the past takes years of rigorous scientific research. When Homo Naledi was found, all we knew was what their bones told us. They were small, walked upright, and had a mixture of ape and human features. Now, 10 years later, we have a far fuller picture. The bones have been dated to around 300,000 years, so they were alive at the same time as humans were. And last year, Dr. Molopiane and her team made the remarkable discovery of fire remnants in this cave. It looks very distinctively charcoal to me. This is just black. Yeah. Black. If you find fire in a paleoanth site, that is big news, right? Because either hominins are using fire or you're having different um, individuals using the space. Some of the small bones that we're finding were burnt and some were cracked open. And usually when that happens at an archeological site, it's a sign of cooking. Oh. Not saying that that's possibly what happened here, but it's a possibility, right? And silly question, we are sure that, you know, somebody didn't just come in here, have a, some chicken wings and <laughs> leave some bones from <laughs> two mean, months ago. It's actually a question I asked myself <laughs> last year. I'm like, hold on. It's easy for me to get in here, right? Um, but let's be fair, you wouldn't come down no. to this cave for funsies, right? No. Um, so the likelihood of someone just coming in here, having a picnic underground is unlikely. In the cave, without my headlamp, the darkness is oppressive. It makes logical sense that Homo naledi must have used fire to navigate their way around here. Professor Berger, I must tell you, I'm having a lot of fun down here. It is it's fun, isn't it? a beautiful space as yeah. well. What are we looking for? So we're in now the passages that Homo naledi would have used to actually reach places like dragons back in Dinaledi. So maybe a quarter of a million years ago, if you can imagine, they would have been coming down these long passages and moving into the dragon's back space first. Then some of them perhaps would climb that steep climb up, then descend down the chute labyrinth into the Dinaletti uh, chamber carrying a body. How do we know this? Because we have burials in the Dinaletti chamber. Children, adults, holes dug in the ground with curled up bodies in them, covered by the dirt from the hole. And what's remarkable about that is the thing we're describing is a human thing. Mm. Wasn't done by a human. Right back here is the Dinaledi chamber. Only 47 people have ever ventured into these parts. There are more people who've gone out into space. And unfortunately, I will not be allowed to go all the way up here, but what a treat to come this close. As one of those 47, Dr. Molopiane has discovered many fossils in the burial chamber. What does that feel like for you, Doc, when you make such a discovery and you unearth such things? And that's the most incredible feeling. It's so exciting. You could cry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Before calling it a day at the cave, I decided to try my hand at a little archaeology. I found something. So this one is a rock. Have I found something? More rock. Can we now call me an underground astronaut? Yes. <laughs> hey, you came down here. This dedicated team's research shows a species with a brain only a third the size of ours, but one that consciously buried its dead a hundred thousand years before we did. Unusual engravings on the Dolomite cave walls were also discovered in the burial chamber, and one wonders whether these symbols were made by them. Until recently, we only knew about its anatomy because that's all we had. Now we know it's also a cultural species. That's a game changer. I, I think it is. I think it's undeniable that, you know, no matter how you interpret what we're putting out now, it's clear they're doing something profoundly more than just living as apes on a landscape. Thanks so much for watching. And we love sharing these unique and eye-opening stories with you. 
By the way, if you have friends and family living overseas, they can also join in on the Carte Blanche conversation. Tell them to find Carte Blanche, the podcast, now on all major podcast platforms.